Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. If you haven't been watching, you've been missing out. We've been working on this Gottlieb home run wedgehead one player baseball theme pinball machine. And uh, we've done several videos on it so far. We did one where we worked on the top side of the playfield, cleaning it, uh, 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 replacing the rubber rings and everything, just shopping it out. And then the game wouldn't run. So we did another one where we took that out and we worked on this bottom uh, mech board. And there were some parts broke and stuff and we fixed all that. Okay, and then we did another one where we worked in the back box and we cleaned all the score reels and the ball, uh, the ball count unit and, and all of that good stuff. And we have finally got up to, we're going to put the playfield back in, work on the bottom of the playfield a little bit. And then hopefully uh, see if we can get the thing to play. Now, this thing has the world's worst paint job on it. We got this from our buddy Shane. And I told him, I said, Shane, whenever we do these videos, we're going to tell everybody in the world that you did the worst paint job I have ever seen on a pinball machine. He says that he didn't do it. But I don't know, man. I think he, I think he may have done it. Look at this crap. This is like, this is easily the worst, the worst paint job I've ever seen. He didn't even use the same color green all the way through it. It's got multiple... Just what are you doing, Shane? Why would you do that? And look how good it looked before he started. So he says that he bought it recently and it had already been done like that. And then he said that if you look at the paint, you can tell that it was done a long time ago. So he couldn't have possibly done it. But I don't I don't know. I think he, I think he probably did it and he's just ashamed. I don't blame him. All right, so um, we uh, and the last last video, whenever we hit start, it uh, came up, reset everything back to zero. It went from game over up to eight balls. By the way, this is an add a ball machine, A D D dash A dash B A L L. That's for all you people who can't understand my southern lingo. It's an add a ball machine, not to be confused with an add a boy machine. It's not an add a boy machine or an add a ball add a ball machine. It's an add a ball machine. Um. These didn't have credits on them. So they designed them like this so that they could be put in places where you couldn't win a free game. It's impossible to win a free game on this. So if, if there was a local law that made it illegal to win a free game, you needed an add a ball machine, like the ones that Gottlieb made, because you win free balls instead of winning free games. So it's a very interesting setup. We'll get into that whenever we finally get it to work. Uh, so we got it to reset and everything, but we couldn't play it because we don't have the play field in it. We, we have done the top of the play field, but we haven't cleaned the bottom of the play field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the game off. I'm going to set it back up in where it goes, and then we'll start working over the bottom of the play field, and then we'll try this thing out. Easy peasy. Okay, so the first thing we need to mess with are the Jones plugs. So we got to get these clean because electricity is going to flow through here into the little connector down there that they plug into. Okay, And so if you have these all corroded and oxidized like this, the electricity does not like to flow through there. It's really as simple as that, folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these all shiny. You can use very light sandpaper. Uh, I've heard people say they use Scotch-Brite. Eh. Seems a little weak to me. Might work. Uh, and I'm going to use my Japanese sanding sponges. Let me go get them. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So one of our viewers sent us these as a gift. These are little uh, Japanese sanding things that are rust removers. They're to clean knives with. But they work. There's two different ones with different grit. They work really good on like rust and stuff. So like, see this rust? Now it's surface rust. It's not gonna. It's not going to uh, refinish metal for you or anything. But basically, it's 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 like sandpaper, basically. But it does a really good job. of cleaning up metal, right? They're really cool. So, um, 
they work perfect for stuff like this. So you can clean these up really good with something like this. You can also, like I said, use sandpaper uh, or use whatever you'd like. But if you want these, if you want some of these, you can get these on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. And on our parts page, we have a link to them where you can go buy them on Amazon. Now, if you go through one of our links and buy anything on Amazon, it gives us a tip. So what you can do is go through our link to buy the sanding sponges. And then while you're doing that, buy a Ferrari. And I get 3% of whatever your Ferrari costs. So we appreciate everybody that does that. Uh, so I'm going to clean those up with those sponges. And then uh, we can plug the play field in. Okay, so we got a much cleaner. It's going to be no problem now conducting electricity. Don't you think that might be how they looked when they were brand new? Can you imagine? Okay, so we're going to plug it back in, but I'm not going to turn it on yet because we're going to work on the actual machine. Um, it looks like there's a lot going on, but really this is one of the most sparse ones that I've done in a while. So... Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and all of the switches, I'm going to clean the contacts on them, spider webs, I'm going to clean the contacts on them with a little file. Now, some people just use like a little, uh, there's different things you can use. I'll use a file, like an old worn out file. You don't want to use anything that's really abrasive because you don't want to wear away the face of the contact. So if you can clean it by rubbing something like a piece of cardboard or a little tiny piece of sandpaper or I said cardboard, card paper, like a card, like a business card, that's how they used to do it. If you can rub something on it to clean up that contact, you basically you need to get that shiny so that it uh, will conduct electricity. If um, they make a little, it's almost like an emery pad, an emery board for fingernails. Uh, they make those for it too, but you you just want something that's not super abrasive because there's only so much meat there, <laughs> you know, and you don't want to wear that all away or sand it where it's not flat and, you know, um, but you need to clean all that up. Some people say, oh, you know, you can spray deoxid on it. I don't know about all that, um, but I don't like showing like the actual tools I use on a lot of this stuff because it's up to debate. You know, some people would never use a file on it. Um, and would, uh, uh, you know, they only use a, a wet paper towel or something, you know, it just depends on what your method is, but you can, you can decide on your own what you want to use, but that's what I want to do first. I'm going to go through and clean the switches. Now on the switches that, that have a uh, heavy AC, I would call it running through it, like the end of stroke switches, they get all pitted and messed up. These are just on the flippers. See how the contact's much bigger? That's because you've got a lot of voltage going through there, right? And uh, a lot of amperage going through there. And it uh, it just really screws those up. So you have to use a file on those. Also on the, the flipper buttons, same thing. It's basically the same as that switch on the actual flipper coil. Uh, so on some of them you have to, but uh, on the other ones, not so much. On a digital game, like a solid state game, you really don't want to get you know, because they're they're plated and stuff. You really don't want to use um, a file or anything really heavy on those. So you kind of, you got to be a little careful with it, but it, you also have to get them clean. If that thing has that level of dirt on it, it's not going to conduct electricity very well. So we got to clean that up. So I'm going to go through and do all of those first. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to swap these light bulbs. So... We usually replace all of them. You see, that's that one. It might still work, but it's on its last legs. I've noticed, too, that whenever they get really black like this, they get a lot hotter. I don't know why that is, but if you see one that's really black, it's probably really hot Whenever if you touch it while it's turned on. Uh, and heat is kind of the enemy on these machines. So one of the ways that we overcome that is we get rid of the number 44 light bulbs that most of these were originally. number 44 and we replace them with a number 47 so number 47 looks about the same it's slightly dimmer but you can't really tell but it's a little bit dimmer but you can't really tell uh, and it uses 40 percent less uh, uh, wattage and so because or not 
I always screw this up. Yeah, wattage. And so because of that, it makes 40% less heat. So um, uh, you can also put LEDs in it. I just don't like the way LEDs really look. But some people love them. If you love them, go ahead and put them in your machine. Um, but the uh, I usually take the 44s out and put 47s in them. There are some folks that on the inserts on the play field, like we're messing with right now, they leave the hotter ones in at the, the number 44s because the thing, the theory is they're not always on. They're only on whenever that light is lit up on the play field. And so, therefore, it doesn't really matter that they get a little hotter because, and, you know, they're original, but and because the uh, they're not always going to be lit up. But they just, So they just replace the general illumination light bulbs, the ones that are always turned on. Um, they replace those uh, so that since they're always on, they have the cooler bulbs in it. But that's up to you. 44s, replace them with 47s, and it'll do wonders. So uh, I'm going to go through, replace all those, clean all the switches, and then we'll see what's next. Okay, so I got all those cleaned, and now there were only eight light bulbs on the bottom of the playfield. There are some that stick through the playfield, but we did those when we did the top of the playfield, which was our first video. Go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. Uh, so we need to look at the, I also did the uh, these three relays. Same thing, you just clean the switches, right? Uh, we need to look at the flippers, though. If you look, now on these older ones, the flippers aren't as strong as on a brand new Stern pinball, people. So if you've got a brand new Stern, they have really strong flippers. These old ones, not so much. So where you're looking for wear is right here where this, uh, I've got dirt all over my hands, I've been working on it, where this roll pin goes through this, this fiber link here, right? So if you very carefully move it, see how it's moving just a little tiny bit? That's about all the wear that's going to affect the strength of the flippers on these older ones, right? And when you buy a new one, that's about how much wear is in it. So that's actually, if I bought a brand new flipper link and plunger for this, it wouldn't make it any better, right? So over here, this one is slightly worse. All right, now this wobble to the side doesn't matter, but... Because what's going to happen is this turns into a magnet, which pulls this in, right? So if there's wobble in there, if there's if there's play in there, you lose a little bit of your strength because it wastes time moving before it actually moves the flipper. And it pulls that in, which turns the paw. The flipper is attached on the other side of the play field, right? Um, you also want to check to see if there is a little bit of play up and down through the play field. If it's too tight, it'll drag on the bushing, right? But if you're loose, like, like this one is, that's just a little loose, that's what you want. A lot of ones like that too. And if you notice, uh, the flippers have different color coil sleeves on them. One of those, I mean coil uh, wrappers on it, one of those has been replaced at some point. Everything looks good to me on them, right? You, you need to pay attention to the end of stroke switch. This needs to be closed. And then when it gets all the way in, it opens it about that far. I adjusted it a few minutes ago whenever I uh, filed it. Right? And then see how whenever it goes back, it moves the small switch? Right? They call that a wiping action. That actually cleans them a little bit if you adjust it like that. And then let's see if I got this one right. Yeah. Same thing. Um, so by adjusting it to where it opens about that much at about that place, um, basically whenever that's together, this is stronger. And the reason that that's there is so that you can hold it in. Okay. Now if you get buzzing on a flipper, and it's more than you can bear. You're, you're probably going to have to replace the coil stop and the um, plunger because what happens is the end of them gets all gnarled up. It's gnarly. And it doesn't hit the coil stop flat. And so it vibrates because the, the coil, the, 
the coil is trying to pull it in and the whenever the plunger goes down, it hits the coil stop but just like on the edge or something. And then it goes because it's trying to pull it in. And that's the noise that you're hearing. Now, if it's buzzing a little bit, don't worry about it, people. Come on now. Come on now. It don't have to be perfect. If you get a problem where these don't move very well, you can oil the pivot. You know, the same thing on the um, kickers. So the way these work it is these switches are the ones up on the top on the slingshot. The ball hits them, which shorts power immediately to this coil, which pulls this in. And whenever it pulls this in, that switch there closes, and that's the switch that gives you the points for the slingshot. So if you have a points problem, it's not these switches, it's this switch. Okay, moving right along. We also have our pop bumpers down here. And the way these work are, when the ball rolls up on the skirt on the play field, it closes that little switch. See the little leg up there that's sticking through the play field? It closes that top switch. So what that does is like the kickers, it just shorts power directly to here. I don't know, this one might have actually a pop bumper. Um, it probably has a pop bumper relay somewhere. But anyway, it gets power to here. And this pulls in. Right? And the power stays locked on until it opens this. When that opens, it kills the pop bumper relay, which kills the power to the pop bumper. Now, on the pop bumper relay, the reason they use a pop bumper relay uh, is because that way they can change points and stuff. So on the pop bumper relay, when it pulls in, so whenever the little switch hits, it pulls the pop bumper relay in. Whenever that happens, it scores points because there's a switch on the relay. And then it also uh, tells one of the other switches tells it to pull in, right? And then one of the other switches locks it in place until that switch, that one switch opens when it gets all the way in. Now on the top of the play field, it pulls in the ring, which violently throws the ball away from the pop bumper. And that's how you get your pop. Um, so everything looks really good on the bottom of this. That's why I didn't film a lot of it. But now we are up to Gottlieb's famous very targets. So we got to mess with the very target just a little bit. So here is their very target. They used these for a, quite a while. Um, even into their solid state games, they were still using them years later. I mean, they had them in games in the late eighties. Uh, so basically the way it works is on the play field, the ball can hit this target on the front lever on the top. And depending on how far you hit it back, you score different points. Very target. So it's a cool little unit. Uh, if you if you hit a uh, a good solid shot to it, you you know you win a ton of points or the special or a free ball or something like that. All right. So basically, they get sticky. So let's say we knocked it halfway back. Whenever it goes to reset it, this coil pulls in, and on this particular one, it doesn't even move. Now, we are upside down, so we're trying to get it to move up, whereas usually when it's down in the game, since you're slanted, you're actually trying to get it to move down, right? Uh, but if you get it clean enough, it will move up, right? So a lot of people will mess with the, the uh, spring, that's, you don't want to mess with that. That's not the problem. Um, I'll show you a good way to fix it, okay? So it's all jammed up. It's not move. It's moving, but it doesn't reset easily, right? So the first thing you need to do is clean this board here because you've got the same problem. These two little wipers that ride on the board get, uh, get all gummed up, uh, and then all of that is resistance. So... Just like on everything else, you can clean it however you want. I just use a little bit of sandpaper. It's no big deal. I'm just trying to shine up the rivets a little bit. 
Get it a little clean. Make sure it's a clean machine. All right. Don't forget the one at the end, which would be your jackpot. <laughs> or your special or your free ball or whatever you get for knocking it all the way back. Okay. So once you get it a little clean, a little bit of synthetic grease. Let's see if I can do this on camera. Since everybody always complains, I don't show everything. <laughs> a little dab will do you, you know. Okay. Get the whole thing greased up. You know what? I forgot to clean the actual contacts. You get, you have to clean the, the back side of these blades too because that's a contact too. I'll do that once I get the uh, thing back together. Once I get to put down my camera. Okay, so now that's all greased up so there's no more real um, uh, friction there, right? Oh, it moved a little bit. Oh, it, we're getting there. So if you look, you have this little switch here that stays closed. That's how the game can tell that it's not reset, right? But when you get all the way, it opens up. Well, what's that? That's more friction, isn't it? So this stuff, although it's dielectric grease, it's also just synthetic grease. And you've got a situation where there's metal here riding on the top of that thing. That's how you do it, right? So the ball knocks it back, resets, boom. It's resetting upwards. Think how good it's going to reset when it's back down in the machine. Easy peasy, people. Easy as that. Okay, uh... So did I, I guess I never even showed you the grease on this video. Basically, we use this synthetic grease. Right? You can get this on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Check it out. Uh, it's on our parts page. Okay, uh, so... What you need to do next is we need to check if it's making good contact at all of the positions. So when it's at the first position, those two little blades need to be right on the rivets, right? And you can adjust that by moving those screws, okay? And so when it lands, not when it's in the middle, when it goes back to wherever it's going to land, this little thing makes it on a step, right? It's on a particular step. And then it lands right on the rivets. You want that, right? So while it's touching at two sets of rivets, on the back, you can use a multimeter to see if those two rivets are connected whenever the blades are on that position. Um, and that's how it should be. So I'm going to check that. If everything's cool, we'll lay the play field down and see if the game will start. All right, so I laid it back down. I went and got a pinball. Let's see what she'll do. Okay, so see how it went up to 10 points? There's going to be a switch stuck somewhere. Maybe nothing stuck. Something stuck though, or it wouldn't have gave us points. Okay, and we're at five home, five balls, whatever. I don't know. We've got obviously got lots of issues, but we'll see. So on this one, I believe if it's like the other one, if you press the flipper button, it fires the ball. Yep. All right, so it's kind of working. That dropped us down to four home runs. Something is buzzing, but things do hold on when the game's playing. That did four. So a lot 
of the stuff's not scoring right. But it is kind of playing. We're down to three home runs. Or, I keep saying home runs, it's balls to play. Those aren't earning, probably because the 10 point relay is stuck on somewhere or something. It stopped its buzzing. Okay, so uh, it's got some, it's got all kinds of problems, but it is kind of playing. Um, it went to game over. See the fireworks above the stadium. Okay, so we got lots of stuff to fix. So maybe, maybe we'll fix a little bit of it. Let me uh, get a piece of paper and let's start writing down all the things that we know are wrong. All right, we're going to reset it again, and I'm going to see if the ten point uh, thing sticks on again. Okay. So watch our score. It should go to zero and stay there, obviously. You shouldn't get 10 points randomly. Okay, so we went to eight balls. Then it went back down to seven, and it gave us 10 points. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. So we went to eight balls, and then it went back one, and it gave us 10 points. What's that all about? Um... And then when I turned it off, it gave us 20 points. Okay, that's another, that's another uh, clue. Okay, so I've turned off the game. Now, you notice when I turned it off, I got another 10 points when the game went off. Now, how did that happen? It's because of the way these score reels work. We, we went over these in the last video. But see how I'm on zero right now? This is the coil that advances it. But watch what happens when I pull it in. Nothing happened. You get the point when it lets go, when it, when it lets back out, right? So that's why whenever we turned it off, we got another point. It's because the coil let loose. So what does that mean? It means that the coil was stuck on. So why was the coil stuck on? Probably because there's a switch on the play field stuck on. So we're looking for something that scores 10 points. So all of these ones at the back are marked that they score 100 points. And then this over here scores 3,000 points in a triple. This one scores 100. This says 1,000 points when lit, which means that it's going to score 100 when it's not lit. Now, these say 100 points when lit, which means they probably score 10 points if they're not lit. But if the uh, switch was stuck on a pop bumper, the pop bumper would be stuck too, and it's not. Um, and then here we have a little stand-up switch that's not marked. So why is it not marked? Probably because it only gives you 10 points, right? So there's one on each side. Neither one of those looks stuck. And if you, a, a, a good way to tell sometimes if those are stuck or adjusted wrong is to look from the bottom of the play field. You can actually look at the switch. See it right there in the center of the screen? Sticking up through the uh, play field. And you can see if it, if it looks like it's straight all the way or if it's bending over and touching somewhere in there. Right? By the way, my hands are not freaking out. I was just trying to do something weird. <laughs> Don't worry about me, people. I'm going to be all right. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then if it was something on the the very target, I mean, it's worth thousands of points. This one's worth 100, it says. The the uh, kickers are worth 100. But look what else isn't marked. The bases aren't marked. So if you roll over that little rollover, you get points. And these... It's very common for these rollovers to get stuck. This one was stuck. So I adjusted the switch out a little bit. And now it can move without touching. And I cleaned it up a little bit so it's not sticking. So I think that was probably it. So we're going to lay it back down and turn it on. Try to start it again and see if it gives us 10 points for nothing again. And then we'll see if that also has anything to do with the what the ball and play thing was doing. Okay, so let's try it again. All right. So this is another good lesson that I learned a long time ago. We had two problems. 
we were getting 10 points and it was going down to ball seven. I think one time it looked like it went down to ball five. Why was it doing that? I don't know. I don't have any clue. But the other one, I kind of knew why it was doing that. So I fixed the problem that I understood first and it just happened to fix the other problem um, at the same time. So if the, if the uh, 10 point, so whenever you hit the 10 point switch, it pulls in the 10 point relay. And if that's stuck in, then their switch is closed and uh, maybe the chime's closed or whatever. And maybe whenever the score motor's turning, if, that, if one of those switches is closed or something, it makes it subtract a, a, a uh, ball in play. So there's some reason it was doing that that was being caused by the, the other issue. So I, I fixed the one that I understood and it just automatically fixed the other one. And we don't have to figure out why it did that. It makes it a little easier on you. So if you end, if you end up with a game like this one, it looks like it's got 10 or 15 different things wrong with it right now. Just fix the stuff that you can understand first. And maybe you'll get lucky and it'll fix some of the other stuff. You can have one little issue that causes 10, 10 issues. And maybe that was. Like, for instance, these weren't scoring before. Maybe that'll fix it. I doubt it, but it might. I mean, it may have had something to do with it. Right? So uh, we fixed that little issue. Hopefully, we'll keep our eye on it. But let's, uh, I probably have to shoot the ball in the play first to see if those even give us 10 points. We'll see. If, uh... Whoa. <laughs> I about lost it. All right, we're at 2,400 square points. I mean, 2,400 points. I said square points. We're at 2,400 points. Um, 2,400 square feet, um, and I don't hear the humming again, so that could have been the, the, uh, the chime coil or something like that locked on. Let's see what happens if you hit this. Yep. So I hit this one, and it tried to give me 100 points, it looks like, but then it didn't. So when I hit that one, it didn't do anything. When I hit that one, it gave us 10 more points. <laughs> okay, so that's the right one. That's the left one. The top one is not... Oh. Okay, the top one, if I really get on it, it works. So it must just be dirty. And the bottom one is lit. Okay, so the bottom one's not doing much, and the top one's sticking. It's not sticking, it's just sometimes it scores and sometimes it doesn't. And then another thing is, we're not getting a chime for 100 points, but we got it for 10 points and for 1,000 points. 10 points, and whenever we rolled over to 1,000, we got one. Um, so let's look at those. We'll just kind of work through it as we find the problems. All right, so that top one, I just cleaned the switch again. Uh, I didn't get it clean enough the first time. And so now, whoop. and interestingly enough, the chimes are working. Look at that first chime. It's got dust and dirt all over it still. <laughs> Cool. All right, so that's that. Now the bottom one, I'm going to try cleaning it too and just see if uh, we get lucky and I just didn't have it cleaned in as well, good enough as well. Let's see if we just hit it. Yeah. Well, nope. It's trying. Let me, let me look around and see what's going on. All right, so we had another clue there. The, uh, the chime wasn't working, right, for the 100 points, whenever the 100 points went off. So, that's always controlled, or usually controlled, by the 100-point relay. So the 100-point relay will pull in, and it gives you the 100 points, and then it also makes the 100-point chime work. And then there's a switch on the 100-point relay that holds itself on, and uh, there may be another switch to do something, right? So I took out the 100-point relay, cleaned the switches again, made sure everything was adjusted pretty tight to where it's making good contact, and now... 
when I hit it, I get my 100 points, and we get the chime. Right? Then the other bases, I'll give you the chime, and then whenever you roll over the 100 points, so now we're about to get 1,000 points, you get a different sound for the 1,000. So, all of that's cool. So all of those are working. Um, we got our first little thing happening here, right? Okay, uh, so let's hit these 100 point ones and see if they work. How's it going, man? Pretty good. Up to? Yeah. Had a customer come in, people. All right, so yeah, when you hit this, 100 points. And it's also lighting up the bases, right? Um, and it turned out the lights up here. So I imagine that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, they're all working right. And so then we've got the two as well. But it didn't like the light. Who knows how that works. But it does score. Okay, now it finally lit the light. We'll have to look into that. And so now that they're lit, they're worth 100 instead of the 10 they were before. Interesting. And it lit up all of our pop bumpers. So this now says 100 when lit. And it's giving me 100. Uh-huh. 1,000 when lit. It's giving me a thousand. Okay, and it it seemed like all of these triples, doubles, all that weren't were not working, right? Triple, three thousand points. Nope, nothing. Triple, three thousand points. Nothing. Double, two thousand points. I think it was working. It gave me five runs because I got a double. That wouldn't have ran in five runs, would it? Or were... Hmm. We'll have to watch all that, too. I haven't paid any attention to that yet. Double, 2,000. So every time I get a double, I'm getting five runs. That don't seem right. <laughs> if you did it over and over again, you would get... Uh, after a while, you just get one run, right? Because you'd have a guy on second, and then you'd end up second, and he'd end up home. You'd get one run. So we'll have to look into all that. But the double part is working, okay? Single, 1,000 points. It rolled over the runs thing, I guess, or maybe it... No, it didn't. We went from 15 to 10. Uh, I did get some extra, an extra ball, though. Okay, so single... It is giving me a thousand, but it must have not rolled that over either. It should have went to. Look, I got another ball. Ah! The struggle is real, people. Now I'm going to get everybody bitching and complaining that it's making chimes and bells. I get that on every video. Ah! James, the bells. I don't like hearing it. I'm watching a freaking pinball video and I don't like bells and chimes. Hold my hand. Comfort me. Okay, so this switch sticks down. That's why we were getting all of the points and chimes and stuff. So see, basically when you roll over the switch, it pivots and presses the two little blades together. But this one, for whatever reason, whenever you roll over it, it sticks down. The blade stays stuck together, and it keeps giving you a single over and over and over again. So why would it do that? If you look, nothing's really bent or anything. And it's not even catching on the wood of the playfield. See it? The only place that it's doing anything is it's touching this bracket. But so is this one. So it must just be a minute thing. So I'm just going to bend it slightly right there to get it off the bracket a little bit and see if that uh, makes it not stick. So Matt's coming by, apparently, because he ordered from Jimmy John's and had it shipped in, had it sent in. So he just ordered from Jimmy John's and had them bring it by, right? And so they brought it by 
Oh, here he comes now. Hey, Matt. I was just telling our uh, viewers about an interesting little thing that just happened. What did you do? So a Jimmy John's order showed up for Matt because you ordered it, and they brought it real quick. They got it here five minutes after you ordered it. Right. Okay, well, I had to sign for it. Right. And there's this little section on here that says tip. Right. And so the guy uh, was walking it down the street. Now, we're one block away from Jimmy John's. So it's literally like five businesses, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I gave the guy your usual $6 tip. Okay. 50%. That's, that's fine. Figured that you'd be cool with that. I was figuring you were going to do like $50 tip or something. I'm not a jerk. I was just trying to be nice to the guy. And since I was spending your money, you know, yeah. I figured 50% tip. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, six bucks is fine. All right. So uh, there's your food. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Okay, so I I bent it a little bit, but then I, I oiled it a little bit. <laughs> you wouldn't think you'd have to oil the side of a switch, but look at that. It's not going to get stuck anymore. So all you people that hate bells and are watching a pinball machine video, don't worry. Maybe it won't happen again. But I think we fixed that problem. All right, so I've, I've had to turn it off like five times now. So I keep having to reset it, and then we try a little bit more, try a little bit more, try a little bit more. So the single is working, the double is working, the triple is not working, um, and then it's giving us five runs when it shouldn't give us that many runs. Okay, so we'll play it a little bit. The, since the home run and the triple is messed up, we're going to have to uh, do a little work. I've got some some uh, lights twerking too so the home run doesn't work kickers are working <laughs> that thumper bumper is not giving us a hundred or whatever with the with the uh, light out. Yeah, so the thumper bumper isn't giving you a hundred. The triple doesn't work. <laughs> I could have got two triples there. No, I think eight balls for a quarter or whatever. That's a, that's a lot of play. You got that light bulb on the left there is a little blinky. Okay, so I've got somebody on first, somebody on third, and zero runs. Oop. Home run doesn't work. Down to two balls. <laughs> Last ball. It's getting there, though. It's coming back alive. We have gotten it where it at least flips now. If someone was stupid, they might not know that it's not working right. <laughs> All right, so again, I got my five runs, so we're going to have to figure all that out and stuff, too. So, Well, that'll be enough for this video, though. We've got, a, we've got way too much to do in the few minutes remaining in the video. So leave your comments down below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We'd like to thank everybody that's been uh, supporting the channel by using our Amazon links. And don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. If you don't know about him, my brother has a channel here on YouTube. My brother, Donnie, and he's got a... Uh, uh, we work on these old pinball machines, but on his channel, he works on old buildings and old cars and trucks and stuff like that. He's always into something fun. So I'm usually over there with him, too. So we'll see you on his channel. And we'll have to do another video of this one. Uh, we've got to figure out the home run, the, the triple, uh, the light bulb. We've got a lot of stuff left to mess with. So um, we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it.